Hi, I'm Dave Nestor. I'm with USBC Equipment Specs. I'm a research technician, and today we're going to show you how we test bowling pins. First thing we do, we check the pin for overall weight, um, just a basic digital scale. Uh, this pin ends up uh, at exactly three pounds, six ounces. Second thing we do is we check for overall height of the pin. We look for the highest point on, this, on the meter. Uh, this pin measures out to 15.008 inches tall. Our next thing we measure is the center of gravity of the pin. Using what we found out on the digital scale, we check on the scale on this and look up three pounds, six ounces, and where the red line crosses shows us that that is 57 sixty-fourths. So this would show 57 sixty-fourths, so it's 5.890 inches tall. That's center of gravity. Once we have that measurement, we set it on our micrometer set everything on a flat base, and we scribe in the center of gravity of the pin. Once it's marked, we'll take a marker and darken in the mark so we can see it. Okay, once we have the center of gravity marked on the pin, we go to the pin swing. This device measures the center, or measures the radius of gyration of the bowling pin. Okay, after we swing the pin, find the RG of the pin, we also now have to check for diameter of the pin in 14 different places down the pin. Uh, everything on this has to match or has to be within spec or the pin will fail our testing. After we check diameters, we have to check the diameter of the hole in the bottom. This measurement would be 0.450 because our caliper is 0.4 inches wide here. Our next test is the scleroscope. This tests the, the cover of the pin. We check us 10 places around the pin and record the, the highest bounce of, of the hammer. Our next test is a drometer reading of the coating thickness or the coat of the bowling pin. We also take 10 readings of this. Our next test is COR of the pin. That's coefficient of restitution. What this measures is the the actual energy transferred from the ball to the pin and how fast the pin moves away from the ball. During this test, we use a, a standard ball for all of our tests. Uh, the only thing that changes is the pin every time. So that way we know the difference in the pins. All right, our next test is to check for the bottom flat diameter of the bowling pin. To do this, we use a, a regular stamping ink pad. We load the bottom of the pin with ink. We go to our flat surface here, set the pin down, 
and stamp the bottom. Once we have the stamped bottom of the pin, we use just a regular caliper and we measure the bottom diameter of what was actually touching. Okay, our next thing is we have to cut the pin in four pieces to check pin coating thickness. We do that on a regular bandsaw with a specially made jig. Okay, once we've cut the pin for pin coating, we bring it into the lab and we use the electric microscope to check coating thickness. We've also divided it off into 10 equal parts. And this measurement is 0.128 of an inch. We need to measure the radius of the bottom of the pin, the base of the pin. Uh, this radius has to be consistent around the pin. The way we do that is with the microscope. And this radius is 0.157 of an inch. This concludes the pin testing. If everything passes, all the tests that we've done today, if everything passes, then the pins get to join this wall of all the approved pins for the manufacturers for this year. Anything on this wall can be manufactured during this bowling season.